and they invited you to their house to sit down with you, they respect you. They respect the hustle. They respect the grind. They see you out here grinding on that phone and they're like, damn, that's the kind of agent I want. Prices never went down, never had a negative year. We had strong years after that. So you won't do what you need to do to succeed at the highest level and you don't even know why you won't do it. The only way you can learn to do that is through experience of people telling you one thing and then doing another later. Exactly. It creates a situation where now you're proving to them that you're willing to invest even more time into them and call them back like you said you would and give them the you know 100% correct information. Deals just fall in your lap now. You don't have to prospect anymore. Not another day in your life. I spent the time I was prospecting building other businesses on social media, building my brand, building other businesses. And thank God for that. Like social media changed my life. Like I'm living the life of my dreams now. Hey, everybody, welcome to our Tuesday morning Leaders Edge Zoom. As you guys know, we do this every Tuesday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today we have a special guest with us, Ricky Carruth. I'll let him talk a little bit about himself. But um, any of you guys that don't know, Ricky is one of the leading uh, salespeople, team leaders at uh, EXP Realty. And today uh, we've asked Ricky to join us and he's going to dive into some uh, some things that he's implemented, some things that he practices. And um, Ricky, why don't you uh, why don't you take us away? Mm. Hey, good to see you guys. I'm sure you guys are from all over the place. So that's good. Um, yeah, I've been on this call before. And I'm sure a lot of you already know uh, my story and what I do and stuff. Let's uh, let's give the most value possible here. If you guys could put it in the chat or even unmute and um, tell me which what direction you want me to go with this, right? So I can go into market, um, why the market's so solid, why you know why we're fixing to see a huge explosion. Um, all that good stuff. I can get into prospecting. I can get into attraction. Um, you know, whatever. What direction do you guys want to take this meeting? Because I don't want to sit up here and just blab about stuff you guys don't care about. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you what what most of us are struggling with here is just lack of inventory, right? Getting listings, there is no inventory. How are you know, everybody's kind of flushed with buyers. There's, you know, really no inventory around. So yeah. how do we get those listings, get those sellers to, you know, how do we attract them? What are we supposed to be doing? That type of stuff. Yeah. And even how do you get people to pull the trigger, uh, whether you have buyers or whether you're working with uh, prospects that are going to become sellers, you know, how are you getting people to to make that move to enter the market? You know, I'd have to dig into to the business, right? So you know, how are we getting leads? Why are we flooded with buyers? Why are we not flooded with sellers, right? It's going to come back down to how you're prospecting, what your marketing and game plan really is. Um, like, for example, uh, you know, you guys know Levi, he closed $86 million last year, all on YouTube. He said 95% of those deals are buyers. Um, you know, if you're focused on a buyer attraction type business, then you're going to have a bunch of buyers. If you have a lot of buyers, look at how you're attracting these buyers and start figuring out how to get in front of set the property owners instead of buyers. Um, I've always been a, um, uh, more of a listing agent. Now I, I never classified myself as a listing agent or buyer's agent. Um, I'm a real estate agent and I'm, I'm happy to help anybody buy or sell. I never turn, I've never turned down a buyer or turned down a seller. I've never fired a client. Um, the ones that end up being huge headaches, I just never let it bother me. I just let them just do their thing, talk their stuff and I just get the deals done. But nevertheless, um, depending on the year, like, uh, some years I was 80, 20, you know, listings, you know, more listings than buyers. Some years I was 50, 50, just because that's the way that the year kind of laid itself out. But the big punchline is that I focused on property owners. I didn't really focus on sellers or I didn't think of them as listings. I thought of them as somebody that could list or buy, you know, they could do either. Um, but I found that property owners were the most efficient. Like in my mind, my theory was property owners are the most efficient um, leads. They're the most efficient clients because they can buy or sell at any given time. Right. So why would I box myself in and only build a business where my lead gen method attracts only buyers into my ecosystem? Why not talk to property owners, right? Not sellers, 
right? Property owners who may buy or sell, create those relationships, see what it is they're trying to do. You know, it's like, when are you looking to do your next transaction? Is it next week, next month, six months, a year, two years, five years, 10 years? When is it? Do you have an agent that you plan on using at that time? And let me create a game plan around what we need to do to help you, you know, with what your timeline is of your next transaction in life. Um, now, what types of things are you doing to get in front of those uh, potential seller candidates? Property owners. I know it. Property yeah, owners. I, I know it's just going to sound so crazy, guys, because when I say stuff, it just sounds so easy. Um, but it really is. I just call them. <laughs> just pick up the phone, pick the houses you want to sell, and just call them and say, Hi, I'm Ricky. I'm a real estate agent. What can I do to help you today? You looking to do something soon? Do you have an agent you're working with? I'd love to work with you the next time you do a deal. It's not super complicated. Really easy stuff. Um, we overcomplicate it, A. B, we try to figure out ways not to call people. <laughs> and this entire business is predicated on you talking to people you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. It's the one thing nobody wants to do. It's like, that's what you signed up for. Um, people say, well, what if I, what, you know, what, what if I have some, and listen, I don't care if you get your leads on Zillow, um, realtor.com, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it doesn't matter where you get the leads. You're going to have to sit down and call them. So, you know, <laughs> some team leaders and brokers are like, Ricky, how do I get, you know, I got some agents that just won't make calls. How do I get them to make calls? I'm like, tell them to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> tell them to go out there and get, get them all nine to five plus flip, flipping some hamburgers, serving some tables, roofing some houses, you know, maybe they don't want to be a real estate agent. You know, I mean, this is sales by the way, you know, um, you got in this business to sell real estate. So, uh, you, you know, I don't know, like if you understand you, that we're using the platforms, the social platforms and all this great technology and everything, the whole point of it is just to help you get in front of people so that it creates what a conversation <laughs> to see what it is they're trying to do, why they're trying to do it. So you can help them do it. Yeah. I think a lot of people are just missing. They're just missing the point here. And that, and the reason why I, you know, built such a massive business is because I got, I, I got the point of this really quickly. And that was that everything you do to try to generate business is just leading right back to just talking to people. And my thing was, okay, well, if that's the case, I'm not going to do all that stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to go talk to people. Right. So I can get people, I, I can pick out any subdivision I want with Rad X. Let's just say, for example, get all the property owners for less than a penny, cell phones, emails, call, email, text, hit them on social. I mean, it it's just so it's just not complicated at all. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how, so a lot of the agents, especially the newer agents, they're afraid of that rejection they're very nervous about making that phone call and getting hung up on or whatever it might be so what is your typical why yeah well, yeah know. man it's security <laughs> i don't know yeah i don't know i mean everybody's yeah gotta... you ask one of those agents why right what are they what are they, what do they say they'll say i don't know yeah. it's like well what are we doing here yeah right, right. you right. don't know why so you won't do what you need to do to succeed at the highest level and you don't even know why you won't do it because of rejection. But what's so bad about that? I don't know. Okay. Look, <laughs> I, I'm empathetic towards it. Um, but because everybody had, goes through that stage. But you know what? The future mega top producers, they bust right through that stage. They make some calls. They get over that. And they move right on to the next stage, which is what are we saying to these people? Right? Then it's how we say it. Then it's reading the people on the phone to understand what their true motivations are because what they're telling you is not necessarily the real story. You know, they, you know, you, you have to learn how to read between the lines in these conversations. And the only way you can learn to do that is through experience of people telling you one thing and then doing another later. And then you start to put two and two together in the next conversation you have, you're like, okay, I've seen this play out before and it doesn't always play out the way that they're talking. 
And now you can steer the conversation and the situation towards helping them and giving them the best service. But I see the comment, lack of knowledge is usually the fear. You can just squash that right this second because you're not there to be a real estate guru, genius, uh, market expert. You're there to help them. So you need to stand behind the fact that you're there to listen to what it is that they're trying to do and that you're going to do everything you can do to help them do it. If there's some kind of information that I don't know, I can easily look that up um, and get back to them. I'm never going to know everything. I'm never right. going to know it all. And listen, when you don't know something, you know, it's almost like you leave them suspended with the return phone call with the information, right? So gives you a reason to reach out to them again. Exactly. It creates a situation where now you're proving to them that you're willing to invest even more time into them and call them back like you said you would and give them the, you know, 100% correct information. But I get asked questions all the time, you know, even now that I have no idea what the answer is. <laughs> um I do have a couple comments in the chat. A couple people did want to hear, you know, prospecting and cold calling for newer agents. Um, somebody made a comment about, you know, lack of knowledge is typically what drives the fear. Uh, I do think that's true. I, it's lack of knowledge, but it's also lack of experience and it's lack of just, ex I mean, at the end of the day, you have to accept that this is what you signed up for, as you said earlier. And uh, I, I did uh, sales over the phone for many, many years when I was younger. And, um, you know, at first it is extremely awkward, but then you become more, you know, you, you just become smoother. You, you learn how to talk to people, you know, and the reality is you can, uh, you, you really create your own tone of the call. You, you can have a lot of control over the phone if you know how to do it. But the only way to do that is through experience and trial and error. And then, like you said, you could start to read the, the 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 conversation over the phone through tonality and certain things that the the people are saying um you know when they say uh they're not ready maybe they're just not ready right this minute doesn't mean that they're not interested or or whatever so like you said you do have to read between the lines um someone did ask about attraction um and for any of you guys that are new to exp or new to the real estate uh community uh, attraction is um, can be used in a lot of different uh, aspects, but attraction of obviously prospects and clientele. But then there's also the agent attraction, which is a very popular uh, topic of conversation here at EXP. Um, but do you want to touch on any of that, Ricky? Yeah, um, it's the same thing, um, right? If you're going to build a, an organization of agents, using the platform of EXP. It's the same thing as building your real estate business. You have to get out there. You have to talk to agents, just like you have to talk to property owners. You have to build relationships. A lot of these are long-term relationships. Like a lot of the property owners you talk to aren't going to do a deal today. It's going to be more like later this year, next year, the year after. Same thing with agents. They're not going to come over this year. They're going to come over next year, six months, eight months. You have to maintain those relationships. So it's really the exact same game is being a great conversationalist, communicator, um, articulating who you are as a person, right? Giving them that authenticity of who you are. Not reading from a script and sounding like a robot. Um, that's going to devalue who you are. It's not really articulating who you are as a person. Like you're there because you really want to help these people, property owners, agents, whoever. Um However, when we come off a little too strong, when we're reading from these 1980s, <laughs> these 1980s scripts, uh, makes us sound too salesy, makes us, you know, gives us a disingenuous feel. Um, learn about people. Be more genuinely curious about what's going on with them, what they're looking for, um, and how you can help them, you know, accomplish whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. They said that um, the... Uh, the what was it Zig Ziglar is the more people you can help you know get what they want the you know the the, the quicker you're going to get what you want yeah. um it's true super true um also so, yeah you know your prospect better than you know your own product you know like know what they need by asking them questions right yeah yeah the exactly that's, that's the fundamental basis for rapport building um 
<laughs> and um well, Ricky, let me ask you a question. Let's, you know, let's hypothetically here, you have a conversation, you call Mr. Property Owner and you wind up having, uh, you engage in a conversation and it's a pretty decent conversation. And and pretty much the outcome is I have no idea if I'm getting ready to sell. Maybe I will in a cool. year. Cool, Mr. Walsh. What, do you have an agent you would work with if you were to buy or sell? Right. Uh, and and how are you keeping in touch with that that prospect after the fact that you because you know, he tells me he does or doesn't have an agent i say i'd love to work with him when the day he does want to do a deal and would it be okay if i stayed in touch great what's a good email perfect. is this your cell number you know great i'm gonna stay in touch with you via email again my name is and with whatever company in whatever area um you know I, i'm gonna stay in touch with you via email if you ever need anything whatsoever how moving a piece of furniture you give me a ring you know what I also do is too. Email. What's what that? I was going to say what I've also experienced myself over the years is that when I do build a relationship with somebody, obviously there's the end goal in mind that they may, you know, at some point buy or sell a piece of real estate with me. But you're building that relationship, and anybody they come in contact with over the course of time that you're, you know, that you have that existing relationship with them, they're a ma they're a major referral source for you. I mean, they are your your uh, spokespeople that are out there, your ambassadors, so to speak, that are out there speaking your name and that will, let's say, tee you up with another person that they come in contact with that might be ready to act right then and there, you know, mm -hmm. more so a now than a someday or a never. Yeah. So yeah, I think you're, you're people right. lose sight of the fact, I mean, I've had the people in my network that they have a relative, let's say that's a real estate agent. I know they're never going to buy or sell through me. Uh, just because it's their brother's daughter. Well, you don't really know that, right? So well, that know. person could get out of the business. That person could do something yeah. that that person didn't like. People change agents all the time. So when they tell me that they have an agent, I'm like, great, who is it? I may know them. Oh, great. They're a great agent. You're in really good hands. Listen, I would still love the opportunity. I'd still love to stay in touch with you if that's okay. Oh, it is? Cool. What's a good email? So I'm putting them in my database and I'm sending them my weekly email, just like I do all my clients, right? Every single Wednesday, regardless if they have an agent or not, if they're willing to give me that information, because two years down the line, I've forgotten about them, but they've seen my emails, their agent retires or whatever happens, they have a bad experience and they say, you know what, I'm going to give Rick a shot. So it happens all the time. I could care less about all of that. I mean, my my job is to put my name in as many hats as possible, right? And and put and get put myself in the best position with every prospect to push it to the to the maximum level of the possibility that we could do a deal one day. And whether it happens or not, it doesn't matter because I'm going to do my job to build that database up to the 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 largest that I can. So I know I'm always going to have business right? The dream is, is to build such a massive database that deals just fall in your lap without prospecting at all. And, and that, and that's it, it. Everybody trying to run away from talking to people, you're, you're really never going to get to that place. Um, you're, you're going to, you're going to die prospecting. You're going to, you're going to prospect till the day you die. And what I want to see is, is you're running towards, let me talk to as many people as possible as quick as I can to build that database up to the point where in three to five years of that really face down grinding, you can get to a place where your database is so large. You've talked to so many people, you've connected with so many people and you're sending out so much content that deals just fall in your lap now and you don't have to prospect anymore. Not another day in your life. 2017, I made a million dollars for the first time in a year as a single agent. I never prospected a day after that ever. And I still continue to make a mill every single year. Um, so that's the dream. And if you guys will just get your head, <laughs> it's like if you just wake up and realize this is the game, go out there and play the game as hard as you can for a good three to five, then you're good. If you just trickle the game and just try to avoid the real game, um, you're, you're just prolonging and it literally, I've seen agents literally die where they make, they called expires and for sell by owners till three days before they died on their deathbed, knowing they were dying, still making calls because they want to leave their wife as much as they can. I've seen it happen. And, um, what are you doing other than happen anymore? What are you doing other than the calls, Ricky? Um, obviously the calls is a great way, obviously, but is there any other way you're prospecting or, or getting these property owners or 
any other form of any other listen to me any other form goes right back to calling them if i get them on zillow i gotta call them if i get them on facebook i gotta call them instagram call them youtube call them sphere of influence call them right yeah. open house i get a list of people that came in the next day i call them it's all comes back to calling them so i'm i'm bypassing all the stuff that leads right to calling anyway yeah. by just calling them i just pick out the exact property owners i want to do business with and i just call them i you, i could even use the same script Yo, oh, as a Zillow lead, let's just say, as any of these, as a Zillow lead, okay? Hey, Mr. Homeowner, Ricky Crew at the XP Realty here in Gulf Shores. How are you doing? Me too. I'm enjoying the days and the gorgeous. Listen, I want to take it too much of your time. I saw you were looking at properties online here recently. Just calling to follow up with that and see if there's something I could do to help you. What's the chances he was looking online at something in the past six to eight months? Probably 100%. <laughs> um, like, they, you could literally take any script and call any property owner. You know, hey, were you trying to sell your house? You know, like you could pretend like everybody's unexpired. Were you trying to sell your house at some point? <laughs> I mean, but that that's not what I do. I don't just, you know, use different scripts for different leads, you know, but you could. Right. Um, if you need to trick yourself into thinking these are Zillow leads or these are warm leads or whatever the case may be, hell, they're selling you the same people that I'm talking about. <laughs> they're selling you their contact information. It's nuts. Yeah. yeah. And guys, everybody that's on this call. So we, you know, we do these zooms every week and we always talk about how to prospect, how to do this. But the key thing that Ricky's saying right here is, is that ultimately all of that stuff leads up. We, what are we all striving for? We want a call. We want to speak to somebody. Yeah. So really what Ricky's saying is a hundred percent. Right. I mean, just call them. Like People just it, need to break down the mental barrier of like just an, in, it, an yeah. incoming call is the same as your outgoing call. Same because thing. Those, those are the same people, as Ricky just said, those are the same people. Like, what are the chances that they were on the internet at some point looking at houses over the last six to eight months? Everybody looks at real estate, right? So if their information was captured and got cycled to, let's say, Zillow, then that's the lead that you're buying from Zillow for like two or $300 for that yeah. lead. Why not just generate the lead on your own for free by picking up the call, use a dialer, use a, a service, whatever, get their information for pennies on the dollar based on what you pay Zillow for the same information and just call these people. Because how many times do you call a Zillow lead and they're like, I never filled out a form on Zillow. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not in the business. So and you're calling, more, you're getting more than $300 too. And uh, you know, in 2021, realtors bought 200 million leads. There were 6 million transactions. You guys are just buying leads. Like this is the thing when <laughs> it's not really. You and um, there's no such thing as bad leads, honestly, um, too. You know, like, you know, you, you get these online leads and stuff. It's not that you're mad that they're bad. I mean, heck, when I when I call like a list of property owners, I'm going to get a 10% pickup rate. So I'm going to do 100 dials. I'm going to talk to 10 people. I'm going to have five great conversations. That's my goal for every 100 dials. And um, I can blow through those numbers with a dialer or whatever. But like if you had 100 internet leads, you're going to have about the same thing, probably 10% pick, you know. Like, it's not that they're bad leads. They're just, I'm getting them for a penny over here for the targeted exact people I want to talk to versus other, you know, with Zillow and other things, even like realty.com and Opsity. I mean, you're paying 35% on a deal. Um, it, it They're giving you random people versus over here, I'm targeted for a penny. Over here, we're random and we're paying 35% or we're paying $1,000 for one lead. Um, even if I'm doing open houses, I'm not going to go spend all that time and energy setting up that house, advertising that house, doing all that stuff when I can just call a bunch of people. I'm the biggest, like social media got me out of sales, guys. Um, I literally am like one little pinky toe in production still. Um, and the whole reason is, or how is because I started doing social media and building other businesses. Once I got to the mill and I didn't have to prospect anymore, I spent the time I was prospecting, building other businesses on social media, building my brand, building other businesses. And thank God for that. Like social media changed my life. Like I'm living the life of my dreams now. I'm traveling three times a month speaking. I'm on national television. Um, I'm getting huge interviews and bigger and everything's just getting bigger and bigger. It's all because of social media. I'm the biggest believer in social media. Okay. But when it comes to real estate, I don't need social media because I'm just using social media to try to get to the conversation when I could just have the conversation. 
So I'm not saying this from a biased standpoint of, you know, you guys should just make calls. No, uh, social media is my thing. <laughs> that is my thing. What I'm saying is, is I don't use it in real estate because I can just call the people I want to do business with and see what I can do to help them, see if they have an agent, see when they want to do stuff. Like I can, I can bypass the entire system and, and go back door on the whole market and hack the entire system uh, doing it this way. Right. So, you know, it's just um, perspective and um, philosophy and um, kind of just uh, my mentality. I'm a, I'm a, I want to succeed right now kind of guy. I don't want to prolong this. I don't want to make this a long drawn out process and a really long journey. I want to do it now. I want to, I want to succeed right now. The quit, the quickest, most efficient manner possible. So that's why I do it the way that I do it. It makes a lot of sense because a lot of, we hear from a lot of agents and they, and they, they'll say to me and Chris, and they'll say all the time, like, how do we get our phone to ring? How do we get our phone to ring? Now, these are the same people that are also nervous about making these phone calls, but wouldn't you rather make the phone call to a property owner, knowing now that you're prepared, making that call, like you are already prepared before you make that call, you already know kind of where they're at, where they live. Yeah, you're controlling who you call. Just like, get that phone call and be like, you're in headlights. Oh, oh my God, this guy just called me. And it goes back to initiating the phone call, then waiting. It's just the better way to do it. Did, did you guys lose me or did we lose him? Or let's say you get their address from them over the phone, whatever. Uh, is it me or is it them oh it's them yeah we we lost you guys anyway um anybody want to unmute throw a question at question my way like what's on you guys' mind hi ricky hey what's up sarah i'm good i'm good i love all your videos i follow you oh thank you thank you yeah. Um, Ricky, is there like a preferred time to call to for prospecting? Like, do you think the morning is better than like when people come back from work? No, 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 there's not. Cause um, you, you say they're coming back from work, but people work um, all kinds of weird hours trying to like um, pinpoint exactly when somebody is going to be available is just, I mean, you're calling hundreds and hundreds of people. So some of these people sleep in, some of these people work night shifts. Some of these people, or stay at home mom, some of these, like, how can you, you can't. So what you do is you call when you want to call, right? I like nine to 12 because I, I like to do it when it's best for me, not when I feel like I might get the best pickup rates because I've tested all kinds of times and I always get the same pickup rates. So you might have a day where you have a better pickup rate at this time than this time. And then the next day you have a better pickup rate on the other. Uh, I just quit doing all that and I just make my calls from nine to 12 every day. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, you don't call on the weekend, do you? I never have. I, I did a Saturday session, maybe two or three times in my career, but weekends for me are for not working unless I'm showing property and going to a listing appointment or negotiating a deal or writing an offer. I'm, I'm not going to be working on the weekends. Got it. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan. Thank you. What I was going to ask you before is what does your typical follow-up campaign look like when you get uh, information from a property owner? You, you talked a lot about email follow-up, put them on, uh, you know, hitting your database uh, uh, frequently, uh, consistently after the uh, initial connection. What does that look like? Depends on what they want to do and when they want to do it, why they want to do it. Every situation is different. So if they're telling me they never want to do anything, or they're just not interested right now, whatever, and that's a more of a nurture lead, then they're just going to see that weekly email every week, every Wednesday. Um, and then they'll call me when they're ready. And then if they if they say, oh, we're looking to buy next month or in six months or in a year, I'm like, okay, now let me go down that rabbit hole. What's got you thinking about selling in six months? What's going on in your life in six months that's causing you to make this decision to buy or sell something? Um, then I'm going to go down that rabbit hole and really try to understand what's going on with them in their life that's causing them to make this decision around that timeline. You know, it's like, do you want to close in six months? Do you want to start the process in six months? You know, oh, your daughter's graduating and you want to downgrade. You don't need the extra bedroom. You guys want to be on the water. Okay, great. 
So I, I collect all this data and then I start to put together a game plan. So if they're nurture, it's just a weekly email. If they want to buy or sell something, then I have to dig deeper into the situation and then create a custom follow-up around what their situation is. Make sense? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way to do it. I mean, if we're if we're going to be a, a, a professional, right? A professional, that's what a professional does. They diagnose the situation, do discovery on what's what's happening. It's like a doctor. When you go to the doctor's office, you say your stomach's hurting. He's going to start pushing on your stomach. He's going to run some tests. They're going to identify what the problem is and then try to figure out the solution and a game plan. It's the same thing. You know, when they tell us something, then we need to dig in, see exactly what this, you know, the problem is, the motivations are, and then create a game plan around it. Gotcha. Yo, Ricky, I got a quick question for you. What's up? It's Gene. Um, hey, what, what's up, Gene? What's up? You know, sorry, I couldn't get on today. I'm actually moving today, so otherwise I'd be there. But, yeah, uh, right, dude. You're at the beach. I can see it from here. I am. At, well, I'm, I'm on my balcony, but I'm not at the beach. Um, <laughs> what do you call it? Is there is there one? Okay. Are there like one or two things that you use on a daily basis, whether it's, you know, some kind of tool or anything like we all have something that we just can't live without that we use every day when it comes down to business you know technology and app something what what is that you know one or two things that you can't live without mm, i don't know i try i keep it super simple i do my weekly email i make my calls i have my notebook in front of me like this this is my crm right? Here's my CRM right here. <laughs> this is it. It's a notebook. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Then my daily planner here, my little legal pad with all my notes on it. Yeah. Listen, okay, so, like, so, so it's, so it's basically old school. It's your notebook really. Cause everything's my, in front my, of you. My, you thing, write things in. my thing is, is that I don't want to, I don't want to go into my business and building my business with a, with the model of creating a ton of work for myself to do right um that's like a lot of people they want to um use crms to like figure out how to like stay in touch call everybody once a year call them on the birthdays do this and that i'm like good god like that's what you want to do like for the rest of your life is like following up with this day no i, I want to create something where once a week i do a 15 minute create an email send it out to my twenty thousand people and do 100 deals a year without having to follow up and do all this stuff right you want i want to create an easy life i don't want to create a complicated life i want everything to be easy i want to work hard i want to build it i want to build it you know i mean Obviously, I put blood, sweat, and tears into it, but my vision was is that eventually I wouldn't have to. It, it would I could do deals effortlessly, where people just call me and say, "I want to buy or sell this." Great, let's do it. Sign a contract. Bam. Um. So yeah, I don't have all this complicated stuff. Simple, smarter, right? I don't. Ha I don't have a team. I don't have employees. Uh, I don't have any of that stuff. I live a really, really fun, easy, simple life, right? And that's what I envision the entire time. That's awesome. That's really good. I mean, yeah. that's, there's great. a lot to be said about that because Chris and I, you know, we're partners for a long time now. We always talked about implementing systems and whatever. And him and I came to the realization, like, why do we want to manage all these systems? Like, it's just... Yeah, it's gonna your the, the effort and time you're gonna be putting into managing all this stuff. We could just yeah, like I said, I've just always do done the yourself. notebook. I've always done the notebook. You know, it's just uh, it's crazy. You know, and yeah, yeah but it gets fixed while everybody's later. like inputting data into CRMs. I'm out here closing deals. Right, right, and these CRMs are expensive. If you want, oh, it's three thousand, five thousand, eight thousand a month. That, I mean, it's crazy. You know, and maybe you just. Dude, Simply. on Red X, on Red X for like 500 bucks a month, I can get like 10,000 leads a month to call, uh, automatic dialer to call them, and then constant contacts to send emails is the cheapest thing in the world. I have my notebook here. I mean, I don't need anything else. I don't pay ads. I don't do billboards. I'm not doing any advertising whatsoever at all. I pay my assistant. Red X, constant contact. That's it. Right. 
I imagine if you're traveling three times a month, somebody asks us in the chat, you have somebody that covers your business when you're away. Like I said, I have a pinky toe in production. My dad handles the day to day of most of the listings and sales and all that stuff. I'm just, I'm more just building the Ricky Carruth brand at this point, you know, brokerage, mortgage, coaching, uh, investing and sales. So that's the five arms of my brand, right? That the, that, that, the, that, that my personal brand feeds. And then I just, I'm just building this up to, you know, yeah, whatever. So yeah. those three systems, it's, can you say that again to everybody? It's Red X constant. Red X is obviously. If you go, if you go to Red X discount, R E D X dot discount, I'll put it right here. Okay, cool. Red X discount.com. All right. You can go to, oh, shoot up, misspelled that. Hold on. You can actually go to, I'll put my scripts here too. Red X discount.com. RC scripts.com. You can download all my scripts. There's also a tutorial of Red X, a demo there. And then the weekly email is start my weekly email.com. So you can go to uh, start my weekly email .com and mm -hmm. see all of my weekly emails going back to November and just steal my template. Ricky? Yo. Hi, how are you? I'm Ines. Hello. I like, I like what I hear from you. I haven't met you, so I'm a newbie in that aspect. I'm 24 years in the business. And it's so true what you said. Don't discount people that are uh, that have family members that are realtors because I listed a house and the contractor saw me, how I work with one of my clients, and then his girlfriend is a realtor, but he gave me the listing of his house. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. So you never know. No, no, no. And also like um, on Red X, when you can look up property owners, sometimes people will filter out people that bought in the last year and not call them. It's like, what are you doing? People, people decide to move three months later. I hate this house. And I didn't like my agent. Um, people want to buy investment properties. People have properties across town they want to sell. Maybe they bought a year ago and they rented their right. other house and now they're getting ready to sell it. You don't know what people's situations are. Exactly. Like, call I agree everybody. 100%. I agree a hundred percent. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think, I think everything that, uh, that, that you're saying, Ricky is like, again, it's just simple, right? It's just simple business. I mean, okay. we're in this business to work smarter, not harder. And all of these things are, listen, we're all waiting for that phone to ring. We're all waiting to get in contact with somebody, but everything you're talking about, it's not a long drawn out process, like you said. And you know, I kind of do a lot of that stuff now. So does Chris. We do other sources of advertising as well. But you know what? When you sit there and you start to look at it, I'm looking at and, and you know, looking at my personal business after talking to you right now and saying, you know what? It's a waste of money. A lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now, I can easily just shortcut everything and do what you're saying. And I'm going to I'm just going to get there faster. That's ultimately what it is. I'm and running I'm lean and mean, guys. I don't have any expenses. I don't have any, I'm just, I'm lean and mean, right? I'm, I'm working at the highest efficiency, talking to the highest quality prospects for literally nothing. Go ahead, a man, uh, 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 Amar, a man, what, what's going on? It's Armand, but uh, Armand, hey, Ricky, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on? So um, I'm 19 years old. Uh, my team leader has been making calls every day every time I go in the office. You're 19? Um, I want to, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I want to, you know, set up a time to talk to you and to join your program, the Zero to Diamond. You don't have to talk and to me. It's right there. The free Zero one. Zero to yeah, Diamond yeah. Com. At the top is courses or 60-day challenge. Bada bing, bada boom. Mm -hmm. And then my uh, second question was, when you're uh, cold calling and when you get someone on the phone that, you know, doesn't like really sound enthusiastic or just giving one-word answers, how do you yep. make that conversation flow better? By not caring that they are acting that kind of way. You don't know what side of the bed they woke up on. I don't really care how, what they, I'm here to help them. There's, yeah. there's so many people with so many different personalities and 
Um, they throw up little blocks because uh, they don't know you. So they're, I don't care about all that. I'm trying to get through to them that, hey, listen, I'm here to help you. So, and you do that through two things. Number one, the words you say, but also the tone of your voice. If you talk to them like they're like they are your mother, every single prospect, if you talk to them like their mom, dad, brother, cousin, best friend from high school, the tone, right, that makes them feel comfortable. Um, that's the first part of it. And then the word you're saying, you're not trying to sell them a house. Do you want to sell? Do you want to buy all that? Blah, blah. Um, you're saying, hey, here's some market information. Is there anything I could do to help you? You looking to do anything now or in the future? What can I do to help you? I'm here. We're here. We're talking. You know, I'm here to help you. What you got? Um, walking into every situation, not caring what uh, what happens. Like when I talk to a prospect, I don't care if they buy or sell or not. Um, when you take that transaction out of the equation, it really opens up so many opportunities because now you're open minded to wait. They're an expired, but they want to buy something across town. If you use the mainstream expired scripts, you're just focused on trying to get the expired listing. I don't care about the listing. I'm trying to use that property as an excuse to get into a conversation to see if I can get to know this person and what exactly it is they're trying to do. Make sense? Hold on. That makes yeah. awesome. Yes. Thank you. Mohammed. Uh, hi, Ricky. My question is that at what stage do we share the information with the seller? I mean, that the prices of the houses, the comparative uh, and pricing, you know, to give them, you know, uh, what do, what's your experience, you know, that uh, you give it to them in the second meeting, in the third meeting, you know? Unfortunately, Muhammad, there's no cookie cutter system here. Every situation is going to be different. It depends on why they want to buy, why they want to sell, you know, when they want to buy, when they want to sell. All these things come into play with how we're going to, what we're going to do, what our next steps are. It's never going to be the same. You know, get out of trying to figure out a cookie cutter, do this exactly, follow up exactly in this many days and text this many days and, you know, hit them eight times. If you, if you try to call me and text me eight times and I'm not answering, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. That's creepy. That, 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 that stage five clinger type stuff. That's, you know, like we're, you know, we should all be past that stage in our life. Okay. So no, if somebody's ghosting me after a couple of, you know, like a call and a text and they still aren't answering, I'm out. I got to go spend time on people who want to communicate and do business with me. And, um, as far as what I'm going to give them, like compared to market now, I never, I've never done a CMA. I've never like done comps and said, okay, here's what your house is worth on paper ever. Because comps are like 10% of the process for me. 90% of how I price a property is based on why they want to sell. If they want to sell because, you know, if they can get this price, this crazy price, they would sell. That tells me I got to go high and they don't care if it sells, right? If they're telling me my lease is up and I got to sell this and I got to buy whatever, like it's got to happen quick. I know that we need to price it lower. So what their motivation is, is literally 90% of how I price a property. The comps are like, the comps don't even mean much, guys. How do you think properties sell? How do you think prices go up? Because something sells for more than the comps. That's how but prices go them, up. But to show them that, you know, you look, you know, this, the, you are selling yourself at the beginning. You know, you're showing that. I'm look. selling myself because they feel like I'm part of their family because the way I'm talking to them. So you, you, I want that to say that you create some kind of value in their mind. My value is my voice and the words that I'm saying that I'm here to help them. And, and when you, Muhammad, when you ask them why they're trying to sell this property, you know what that does to them? They never had an agent ask them that the way that you're asking them. They might have had so that may be in some kind of script where people run through it. And that's part of like this 10 question little survey they try to give sellers. But when you come at them with like complete genuineness around why they want to they want to sell this property and then whatever they tell you, you start digging deeper in on that. 
and, and start to relate to them and start to bring it to a more personal level, you, that's it. But they don't know you. They are just, you know, the they know you now. Second. They know you now. Listen, it, 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 it you, you talking about them interviewing other agents? Yes. Okay. You say you interviewing other agents? They say like, that they have the, somebody in the family that, you know, they're going to refer them, give it to them, you know, for example. Yeah, but you great. want to say, them, look, I have this advantage to that person that they know in the family. Great. They got a family member that's an agent? Yes. Cool. Yeah. Good luck. I'm not going to sit here and fight over listings. I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to um, persuade you not to use your cousin. If I meet you and you like me enough to list your property with me over your cousin, great. If not, what you probably, you, you pretty much lost that deal before you even walked into the living room. If their cousin is an agent, unless their cousin just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mohammed? No, I have had I had clients that you know they said that look, I don't I they I had it this with this agent and it was six months in the market and they they couldn't sell it. So you want to show that you have some. Uh, so value so the cousin had it value. listed for six. So the cousin had it listed for six months. Yes. Okay. So the cousin's it, out. You know? If they're interviewing other agents, the cousin's out. Yeah, Mohammed. I think I think. I think what Ricky is saying is in simple terms is you're making it more complicated than it needs to be. You know, they already just, they're interviewing somebody else. The cousin already had this for six months. They're already talking to you because that if, if they wanted to list with the cousin again, they wouldn't be talking to you. So, you so already, how do they get to you, Muhammad? How do they get you? How do they find you? I call them, you know, and cold calling, you know, I just boom. So, so if you cold call them and they invited you to their house, to sit down with you, they respect you. They respect the hustle. They respect the grind. They see you out here grinding on that phone, and they're like, damn, that's the kind of agent I want. I want somebody out here calling people. That's what we need. Cousin Johnny, he didn't do nothing. Muhammad's over here calling people. Hell, if we listen with him, he's probably going to call people to see if they want to buy our house. They've, they're have already sold on you, bro. You don't have to sell yourself anymore. Walk into the appointment, assume the listing, Figure out why they want to sell, price it accordingly, and say, let's get started. Here's sign here. It's time okay, to close more, the deal. Excellent, excellent. You know, uh, one more question. How do we, if we, if the investment uh, properties, how do we invest the properties without putting our money down? Do you have any uh, invest in properties can... without putting money down? Yes. You can either raise money from other people right? To, to, to invest in these, these properties, but why are they going to invest with you if you aren't even, even putting money into the deal? So sometimes, you know, they, you find the property that they, they price it, you know, the bank, they price it higher, you know, than what you, they are selling it. So you say that, look, this property is, if you uh, appraise it, it's going to be this much. So I'm going uh, to get the less than that the price of the house so it didn't... listen man you don't need to be talking about investing right now what you need to be talking about is getting your sales game right making enough money to put down on some properties well said well said um Yo, all right Yo, hold on yeah. quick question Rick, ricky i don't know if you guys covered this because i was in and out but i think the biggest elephant in the room right now is the challenge that every single uh agent working with buyers today is facing the rates. They're, everybody's like, you know, I'm going to hold off till the rates come down. Now we know what to tell them. The question is, what are you telling your buyers right now that are looking at homes and then they start coming to you saying, you know what, I'm going to wait. I got to wait till the rates come down or that's, you know, what are you telling them? I tell them, great. Let's wait till rates come down. Okay. So you just put them on hold and work with somebody else, right? 100%. All right. That's if they want to continue easy. looking at homes, we can continue looking at homes. I don't really care. That's 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 the, the thing the, right the, there. The, I, the, the more the more time I've wasted on people, guys, the more money I've made. Closings are going to happen every single day of your life. Let me show you this, guys. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, uh, affordability, right? Monthly mortgage payments from 1989 to 2023. See how see how steep this curve is? Can you guys see that? By the way, 
Yep, yep, yep. Look at that, right? Look at where we are right now. But what's really cool is, is when you take this chart and you adjust it to inflation. Now, look at this is a much better um, illustration of monthly mortgage payments because this is adjusted. If you see the first chart, it was around 700 bucks back in 1989. But in this chart, it shows it at about 1700 bucks. What's cool about that is, is it's just adjusting it for inflation of what 700 bucks was back in 1989. And you see how this chart goes. And you see what happened is, is we got really spoiled 2010 through 2000, you know, 15, 16, 17, even 18, 19 was lower than, than the 1990s. And then it shot back up to here. But if you see, we're not too far off at all from 1989. Not That's at all. And yeah. if you look at um, mortgage payments as a percentage of median household income, we're, we're lower than we were in 1989. And we got spoiled right here. But when rates go down 1%, that's going to lower payments by 300 bucks. And we're literally going to be right here where we were in the 90s in terms of affordability because the payments are 2651 right this second. And I just want to show this before I before we get to the, the top of the hour here. But look at prices. We started out the year. This is national prices. We started out the year at 350. Now we're at 378. We're up 9% from the, from the beginning of the year. And prices went down right there. Look, they went down in 2022. They went even down in 2021 and picked up at the same time. We actually started picking up a little earlier this year than we normally do price-wise. And it shot to the moon. And guess what? We're about to go positive year over year. And all the people talking all this smack about real estate crashing and stuff, we're in a crash. It's just not a price crash. And you see this wall here? We're going to bust right through this and go positive year over year. We're, we're positive. We never went negative year over year in a lot of markets. Agents are leaving the business left and right. We're down 60,000 agents. Why? It's because uh, 4.2 million uh, transactions is what we're on course to do this year, right? If you go back to 2008, we were at 4.12. We're not too far off from 2008. This is literally 2008 right now. Uh, and if you count like the number of homes and the number of buyers and sellers in the market and everything, it's probably even, you know, if, if you kind of like do the inflation numbers of transactions, comparing this to that, it's probably worse than 2008 in terms of number of transactions. But if you look at inventory, we are, <laughs> this is in the 80s. We were between two and three million at any given time homes for sale. We had four million in 2008. We're down to 700 thousand homes for sale we're lower than 2021 and 2022 right this second i could go through why there's so much demand in the market with birth rates and how many 33 year olds we have and people that are sitting in their house wishing they could buy another one that are locked into the rates and they just every day they want a new house more and more and more and the amount of immigrants coming into the country and stuff like that but look at what home prices have done, not only through recessions, but just regular. I mean, like only in 2008 during that time did prices ever go down. And this chart, the green, this is going back to 1942. This is appreciation of real estate, residential real estate, going back to 1942. The green is positive years. You see what that, you see what I see? In the 40s, we had five years of double digit appreciation. Everybody said it's going to crash and burn. It didn't, it stayed positive. In the late 70s, we had the run up to the 18% interest rates. Prices never went down, never had a negative year. We had strong years after that. In the mid 2000s, we had the run up to the Great Recession and we had that those negative years, you know, from 2008. Here recently, we've had two double digit appreciation years and everybody's like, oh, dude, that's nothing compared to some of these other run ups that never went negative afterwards. We hit 6% last year. And we're at 9% right now on the median home prices right this second. Fixing to go positive year over year. So what I what I feel bad about is first-time home buyers that are getting kind of priced out a little bit. Um, however, if interest rates go down 1% from where they are now, that's going to help out a lot. Median household income is going to continue to increase. We're not in that crazy of a shape when it comes to affordability is what people will lead you to believe. It's not that crazy. I think that we have a lot of people who are, who are woe as me on this. I'm priced out of the market. Get off your ass and go save up some money and go buy a house. You can do it, guys. I promise you. But um, 
nevertheless, we've got record amount of 33 year olds coming into the market, immigrants coming in, renting, and even the rent increases are causing home prices to go up because investors are willing to pay more. You just had an investor buy a uh, $1.5 billion worth of 4,000 homes from DR Horton. I'm buying three DR Horton houses right now, closing on two this month and another one in September. As soon as they get through with it, I just closed on an older home. I bought a commercial duplex. I'm buying everything I see that's around three to $400,000 because I know what's going to happen with prices and rent and everything else. We're we're about to see an explosion, ladies and gentlemen, of buyers into the market. There's so much, there's more pent up demand than we've ever seen. And it's going to be unlike anything you've ever seen. Uh, the, 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 the run from 4.2 million transactions to 5 million, 5.5 million is going to be unlike anything you've ever seen. And what you want to do is stack inventory. Um, you, right now, you should be trying to stack inventory to the moon. Take overpriced listings all day long. Because the market's going up, it'll catch up to it, or the seller will come down, whatever the case may be. Um, but you want to be the one that's sitting on a pile of inventory, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 listings, when rates do get closer to six, because it's going to be just crazy. The market's going to get nuts. And uh, you're going to be sitting there thanking your lucky stars that you did what you needed to do to get out there and create more relationships with property owners and stack listings and build your database, do your weekly email, do the things that you need to do. Back in, uh, this is an illustration actually of my business. This is just a, an illustration. But I didn't do anything different here. 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I didn't do anything different. 14 was the first year I did 100 deals. My, I didn't do anything different day to day, right? My my business expl re exploded with the resurgence of the market. When the market came back, my business exploded with it. Same thing with you guys right now. This is your 2008, but it's not going to take, what is this, five years to, to re-expand? It's going to come back with a vengeance really fast. And you don't really have the time that I had to get out there and just slow, slow roll, build this thing. I wasn't slow rolling, but you guys can, I didn't have Red X. I didn't have all this stuff. Um, you can get out there and really do some damage. And if you're not, if you're just sitting around trying to figure out stuff, you're doing the wrong, you need to be talking to property owners all day, every day, building that database, stirring the pot, making stuff happen. And it may not pay off like you want it to right this second. Um, you know, you may, you may talk to tons and tons and tons of property owners and you may not get all the listings in the world that you want. Um, but that doesn't matter because those people are going to do business with you next year, the year after, the year after. And they're not going to, you know, when they when it comes to interviewing a couple of agents, you're going to be the one they pick because you've been talking to them for two years and sending them emails and staying in touch and doing all that stuff. This is your moment, guys, where you can go out there and actually make a million bucks. Like this is the moment right here to take advantage of because once this opportunity is gone and the market resurges and everything... It's harder to gain the market share that you need to, to go out there and really make this happen. Right now is the time. It's kind of like the stock market, right, Ricky? Uh, back in, you know, the pandemic, everything's getting slaughtered. Everybody's, you know, market's down, it's crashing. And look at all the people that, you know, right now, these, these, the rich just got richer because they had a plan in place. Same thing with you, right? You're building for the future. They bought all these stocks on the way down because they realized the value was there. And it was just down for a reason um, that was whatever, geopolitical or, you know, pandemic. And now they're all reaping the benefits. Same thing is kind of what you're saying. Yeah, I'm buying houses. I know how home prices, I mean, the DR Horton homes I put under contract, they've already went up on the prices in those neighborhoods. Um, rents continuing to go up. You know, I can buy right now an investment property at a 7% rate. Um, and then I can refinance that rate. If rates go down to six uh, to five and a half or something, I can refinance them next year or whatever it is. But even at 7%, my payments are 1700. I'm renting these things out for 2300. Um, the rent is going to continue to go up. I can hang on to that 7% rate and still win big, but in, in a, in a year and a half, I can refinance at five or five and a half. Um, I can do that and lower my payment even more, but I can't go back at that point and buy at today's prices. And today's yeah. prices aren't going to be here anymore. That's why I'm buying right now 
when things are the way they are, because I know I'm not going to be able to come back and buy brand new homes for $325,000, a four bedroom and all this stuff. I just, it's just not going to happen. So, um, you know, I tell my, uh, I have as well, and I'll tell my clients, you buy a $300,000 place, you put down 20%, you're putting down 60 grand. Let's say you're making $500 a month. You're making six thousand dollars a year on sixty grand. It's a ten percent return on your money. Somebody else is paying your mortgage down for you. Now that three hundred thousand dollar place is worth four hundred or whatever in ten years. And look, right? So it costs you sixty for that place, and that'll be paid off. It's pretty simple math, right? I'm sure you're doing the same thing. Super simple math. If I buy something for three fifty and I put twenty percent down, my payments are seventeen all in. Payment, interest, insurance, taxes. I'm renting them out for twenty three hundred. What is that? That's uh 600. I put uh what 70 down. Uh I'm 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 making a um I'm making a 10% return on my cash on cash. They're paying my mortgage off. I have write-offs. It's appreciating. And the thing is as rent goes up 2 to 3% a year for 5 years, look at what I'm making. Like that that cash on cash return increases. It goes to 12%, 13%, 14%. I'm sitting here making 14, 15% of my money on a single family home. And not to mention whatever appreciation happens. Like it's it's insane. The returns are insane, honestly. Think about when that house is paid off. Somebody paid it off for you and it only cost you 70 grand. And now all of a sudden, even if the house never appreciated. It, it didn't just cost him 70 grand. Within, within like eight years, I got the 70 grand back. Right. I got the 70 grand back. It's brand new houses, no maintenance, right? Nothing's gonna go wrong in that house for you know, whatever, 10 years. Um, maybe I have to do a little something, something here and there. But like within eight to ten years, I made my money back, my cash on cash. All right. right. Now I just got property for free all over the place. All these houses I'm buying right now are like free money. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, listen, it's uh it's a little past 12. Ricky, I just want to thank you on behalf of everybody here. Thanks a lot for your uh, your knowledge, your time, and uh, we, we truly appreciate it. And um, everybody else, we will see you guys next week. Same time, same day. Leaders Edge Zoom. Thanks, Ricky. Thanks again, Ricky.